everyone, welcome back to the channel of Ecoholics. So in today's video, you are going to learn another method for checking the quasi-concavity. We have done the part 1 of quasi-concavity in another video. First, go to that video, find the link in the description box and then this is the part 2 of the video. Alright, so in part 1 of the video, I told you a graphical method with the help of which you can check whether a function is quasi-concave or not. But drawing the graphs, making the graphs is not possible for each and every function. Like if you have got a very complicated function, you cannot sit in the exam and start making the graphs. So what is the rescue then? What is the another thing which should be done? So I am presenting you a mathematical method to check for a function whether it is quasi-concave or not. So let's just learn that. So what happens? First thing we have to uh, remember few things before beginning with this video is that when I talk about this mathematical method, there is one very important assumption. What is that? The important assumption is that the function about which you have to check quasi-concavity, it should be twice differentiable. If it is not twice differentiable, you cannot use this method. It should be twice differentiable. If the function is not twice differentiable, you cannot move forward with this method. So the first thing you have to check is that whether the second derivative of the function exists or do not exist. After checking for the twice differentiability, if the function is twice differentiable, what, if, what we just have to do is, we have to work with the bordered Hessian matrix. And what is that? So bordered Hessian matrix is something like this. So I start with zero here, then I do first order derivative with respect to first variable. So I will be writing here, since I can have a number of variables, I can have a number of variables here. So I'm not writing the variables in the bracket, then first order derivative with respect to second variable and so on till first order derivative with respect to n variable. After that again, first order derivative with respect to first variable, first order derivative with respect to second variable and first order derivative with respect to nth variable. Like this. Now in the second row, what you have to do is, in second row, the first order derivative would be constant and we are going to take it with respect to the first variable only. So first order is with, will be with respect to first variable only throughout this row. Now the second order will be with respect to first variable. Then again, first order will be with first variable but the second order will be with respect to second variable. And following the same pattern, I am going to get f double dash 1n over here. Now come to the third row. Over here, since we are starting with f dash 2, the first order derivative in this whole row will be with respect to the second variable and the second order derivative is going to just switch. So I am going to have here f double dash 2 1 f double dash 2, 2, so on, till f double dash 2, n, like this. Now, if I follow the same pattern over here also, I'm going to get f double dash n, n. So this is a bordered Hessian matrix. Now you understand why the assumption we took in the beginning of twice differentiability is important here because I need a lot of second order derivatives over here. If the function cannot be derivated up to second order, we cannot proceed with this matrix. So what's the trick here? For checking quasi-concavity, what I want is from my bordered Hessian matrix, I want my even determinants to be greater than or equal to zero. Even determinants, the determinants of the even matrices. I will tell you what is that. And I want the odd determinants to be less than equal to 0. When I say even determinants, D2 should be greater than equal to 0. D4 should be greater than equal to 0. 
and when I say odd d1 should be less than equal to 0 d3 should be less than equal to 0. So in your exam of course you are not going to get a 20 by 20 matrix most probably it's up to this portion only this thing so we have three rows and three columns this is the most common type of matrix which you are going to receive which I'm marking in red so something like this so you are going to just have a two variable function where you're just going to have x and y maybe or x1 x2 so you will be having just six derivatives so six over here three rows and three columns you're going to have so what is the even determinant over here when I talk about even determinant so when I do first uh, you have to remember this thing that determinant can be found for the square matrices only so this matrix 0 f dash 1 f dash 1 f double dash 1 this one which I'm marking in black this comes out to be my d1 after that I will move to the next row this one f dash 1 f dash 2 f double dash 1 1 f double dash 1 2 so from here till here this will be my d2 because it is the next determinant of the matrix right so if I will mark if if I will choose this row and this row of course I'm working with the first two rows only so this column and this column are going to give me d3 so over here if I talk about d2 d2 will be f dash 1 f double dash 1 1 f dash 2 f double dash 1 2 so the determinant should be greater than equal to 0 right and when I talk about d1 because I'm talking about the odd determinants as well I'm talking about odd determinants being less than equal to 0 so in odd determinants I'm talking about d1 which should be less than equal to 0 so when I say d1 d1 consists of 0 f dash 1 f dash 1 over here and f double dash 1 so this is it that is how you will be following the same method you can find the other odd and even determinants as well but mostly in questions when you just find out d1 and d2 your answer would definitely come you would get to know whether this function is quasi concave or not but i would still suggest you to work till d3 because sometimes what happen is ki d1 comes out to be negative d2 comes out to be positive and you think that the function is quasi concave but in actual terms when you try to find out d3 it comes out to be positive so which is not fulfilling the condition of odd determinants less than or equal to zero so it is always a good idea to check up to d3 but your answer would come like only when you're working till d2 right so this is how you're going to check so the these are the necessary conditions where you want them to be greater than equal to zero and less than if you will just do this ki even determinant strictly positive and odd determinant strictly negative these will be your sufficient conditions they are sufficient to tell you that your function is quasi concave so this was the mathematical method to solve for quasi concavity we also have a video on numerical where I'm solving the question for checking we have whether we have a quasi concave function or a quasi convex if you wish to see that video please go to the link in the description box below also in the comment section please let us know the other topics on which you want videos from us if you found this video resourceful please like it share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel thank you everyone